In this video, we're going to get a feel for what assertions are and what role they play in unit tests. Now, there are pretty foundational aspects of unit tests. In fact, you can't really write unit tests without assertions, so it's good to understand exactly what they are. So let's dig in together now and explore exactly what assertions are. So let's start with the definition of an assertion. An assertion is a statement of fact. It's basically a truth that we hold to be true at a particular time in the execution of a program or in a unit test. You can actually use assertions in normal Java programs through the assert API, and the idea is kind of the same. But what we're focusing on here is the idea of assertions in unit tests. So what we're saying is really an assertion is a truth, or it's a fact, that we're stating at a particular point in the unit test which describes what we believe to be true. And the idea of this basically is that if the assertion is true and the unit test framework evaluates the expression for the assertion, if it is true, then all good, and the test continues. But if the assertion isn't true, in other words, that expression when it's evaluated, if it's evaluated to false, then at that point, the unit test will fail. And basically it's saying there's something up with the code and it's got to be fixed. That's pretty much what assertions are in a nutshell anyway. So yeah, an assertion, it's stating something as a fact. And we can see this here. This is the dictionary definition of the word assertion. And you can see here it says the action of stating something or exercising authority confidently and forcefully. And that's true. Really in an assertion, when you're writing that down in a unit test, you're saying this is what I believe to be true of the world at this stage in time. It's an absolute belief that you hold. It's a conviction. I believe this is true. So that's what assertions are really. So let's have a quick look now and think about some assertions that we can formulate in general in real life. Let's not worry about code too much for now. Let's just think about how to use assertions in language. Because that's typically what you do when you're writing unit tests. You think, first of all, about what you believe to be true about the code, and then you translate that, you formulate that into assertions programmatically, through either JUnit or Hamcrest, or an assertions library that you might use. But it all starts with basically thinking about the assertions themselves and what you want to translate into code before you can actually write those assertions down. So let's just think about it for a second. So a sample assertion could be, I am English. And that's true, that happens to be true. So I would make that assertion, I am English. Another assertion as well, which we could have um, based on me, just thinking uh, aloud now, is I am a man. That's also true. I happen to be a man of male gender, so that's an assertion as well. So those two assertions are facts about me. I am English and I am a man. Okay, those are assertions. But similarly as well, you could also have an assertion which doesn't happen to be true. For example, I could assert I am an American woman. Now obviously I'm not an American woman, but nevertheless that could still be an assertion. So you've really got to decouple in your mind the idea of asserting something and of something being true. An assertion is a belief that something is true. It's not necessarily the case that something is true. And whether something is true or not, whether that assertion evaluates to true or to false, that's what happens when the unit test is actually run and the assertion's evaluated. So what are assertions used for? Well, assertions are used for passing or failing a test. In other words, when you write your tests, you write tests which include a collection of assertions of what you believe to be true. And if all the assertions in a test are true, that test passes. And if just one of the assertions is false, and it evaluates to false, then that test fails. So assertions are really used to evaluate, let's say, the state of the world at a particular point in your unit test, and that's usually after you've executed the method that you're testing. So let's have a run through of this idea now. Let's suppose we have a sample test case, and in that sample test case, I have these assertions. So the first assertion, I am English, let's say that evaluates to true, that's fine. The second assertion, I am a man, let's say that also evaluates to true, that's fine. At this point, the test case is still running, because the world's a happy, shiny place and everything's going well, everything's green as it were. And then it hits the third assertion, I am an American woman. And at that point that evaluates to false. And so because it evaluates to false, that would cause that particular test case to fail. And it would fail with an assertion error. And the assertion error would say something that would give us an indication that that particular assertion was the one that caused the test to fail. It would say something along the lines of, I expected that Matt was an American woman, but Matt wasn't an American woman. Something notional like that. It isn't exactly like that, but you get the idea. Now we can put assertions at different places in our test case. And depending on where we put the assertions, this determines the type of role those assertions play. And assertions basically are categorized into two different types, depending upon whether they come before or after the method that's being tested. If they come before the method that's being tested, they're known as preconditions. So preconditions basically test the state of the world before we execute the test method. And if the assertions come after the test method, these are known as post conditions. So post conditions test the state of the world after the test method has been invoked. Now post conditions are usually the main category of assertions we think about when we're writing unit tests. Because in general, you do some setup to prepare for the test. That could be preparing some test data or setting up some objects to behave in a particular way, depending on how you're writing the unit test. 
then you invoke the method that's being tested and then afterwards there's an assertions block where you basically make assertions about what you expect to be true and that's typically the format of most unit tests so really the category of assertions you're going to come across are post conditions and you'll just find those referred to as assertions but nevertheless it's useful to distinguish the two types and also of course if you put preconditions in this can also make your test code more robust as well because that way you could fail a test if there's some setup for the test that isn't done in accordance with the way you expect it to be done. But I'll get too bogged down with that for now. Just remember the fact that assertions are a statement of facts that you're making in the code, and you normally use post conditions to assert the state of the world after you've invoked your test method. And that's really what assertions are about. So now we know what assertions are in terms of language, linguistically how, how they are and how we describe them. What kind of things can you assert then? Well, you can assert things being true, so in the assert method, you can pass an expression to be evaluated, and if that expression is true, or rather if it evaluates to true, then the assertion passes. If the expression evaluates to false, then the assertion fails. You can also assert things being equal. So you can have two objects, for example, so two instances of the same object, and you can compare them with a dot equals comparison to say if A dot equals B. So you can assert that they're logically equal in accordance with their equals method. You can also assert that things are the same. In other words, they're identical. They're, they're, they're physically the same reference. So that could be useful, for example, if you put something into a map and then later on you retrieve it out of a map, you might want to check that those two references that you have physically point to the same object. And in addition to these, you can also do negations of those things. So for example, you can assert that something is false by passing an expression, or assert that things are not equal or not the same. Now all of those assertion types that we've just seen, those are available via JUnit's assert class and it has a range of assert methods, which you can use to test those particular scenarios. So JUnit really, through this assert class, gives you a basic foundational um, kit, if you like, of assertion methods that you can use. So it's basically like the, the foundational set of assertion types, if you will. Now, in addition to JUnit's assert method, we also have an assertion library, which is bundled with JUnit as well, or at least a subset of that library, and that's a library known as Hamcrest. Now, Hamcrest is very nice, and you'll find yourself using Hamcrest quite a lot in JUnit tests. What Hamcrest lets you do is to create more complex assertion expressions, and it does so using a very readable syntax based on so-called matches. But let's not jump ahead of ourselves for now. We'll see that later in the course, but just know that you have a very rich library of assertion methods and ways of asserting things and formulating assertion expressions that you can use, which are delivered through JUnit's assert class and the Hamcrest library. So, now you know what assertions are and the role they play in unit tests. In the next videos, we'll dig in and see how we can write our own assertions using JUnit and Hamcrest in the IDE.